How can you improve your speaking? What's the difference between whenever and whatever? And when do you use them? We'll give you some help with these questions and look at some very British three-a-word horror stories that we found on Twitter. Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hi, I'm Reza. And I'm Craig. And with over 45 years of teaching experience between us, we'll help you improve your English and take it up to the next level. How are you, Craig? I'm very well, thank you. Excited to be back again and podcasting with you. How are you? Splendid, all been Splendid. Hey, jolly good, jolly good. We're all British this week and we're going to look at some oh, I say. very British problems. But before that, we'd like to welcome all our new listeners who are joining us for the first time. And if you're an old listener, welcome back. We have an audio message to begin with this week from Alan from Argentina, who got a 110 score in the TOEFL test. Hi, Reza and Greg. My name is Alan. I am from Argentina, and I'm recording this audio mainly to thank you for all your amazing podcasts. I've been trying to improve my English for a long time by now, and since I don't have a lot of time to do it, I find it really useful to listen to your podcast while I'm doing another thing. I discover that it is really helpful to improve my listening skill, but also to enlarge my vocabulary and learn some particular aspects of grammar as well. I have a question regarding speaking, which is for me the most difficult thing to improve. I've taken the TOEFL exam a couple of months ago and I got 110, which I think is a pretty decent score, but I was a little bit disappointed about my speaking score. I got 24, which is not bad, but I practiced a lot to improve my speaking and I don't see the results. So I hope you can give me some alternatives. And also, I'm really looking forward to your feedback regarding my pronunciation and my fluency. Again, thank you for your postcards. And I hope you keep doing this for a long time. Well, Alan, thank you very much for your message. And congratulations on such a high score in the TOEFL exam. 110 out of a maximum of 120. That would be uh, equivalent to the common European framework. Uh, scores of about a very high C1 or C2. An IELTS band 8, that's a really good score. Yeah, well done, Alan. That's fantastic. Really, really good result. You did ask how to improve your speaking. Any ideas, Craig? Well, I think it's a no-brainer. A no-brainer is when something is obvious, when you don't have to think too much because it's obvious. It's obvious to us that our sponsor, italki, can help you improve your speaking because it's possible you don't have time or money to go to an academy or find a one-to-one -one private teacher in person. So italki is a website that will connect you with a teacher online and you can practice your English with a qualified teacher. So if there are no English speakers near you, just find one on italki. You can choose by price, by nationality, which means you could speak with an American or a Brit or a Canadian or an Australian and a Scottish person, whatever you feel will be good for you. And if you're not happy with your teacher or you just want to change to a different accent, perhaps to have more variety, then it's very easy to change to a new teacher. So, Reza, are there any special offers that Italki are offering people like Alan who wants to practice speaking? Yes, if Alan or any of our listeners wants to give Italki a go and speak with a real person, a native speaker, or speakers with different accents, just to help you get started, if you sign up through our website... And pay for your first lesson. Pay for your first lesson, then you'll get an additional free €10 Euros Italki credit after you've paid for your first lesson. 
to have some more free time on italki as a thank you for more information about italki just go to englishpodcast.com/258 and click on the italki link to take you to their website and we'd like to thank italki very much for sponsoring this podcast that was a nice audio message now here's a written message in other words an email and this has come from Lucena from Cordoba oh no sorry that hasn't no and this has come from Javier Delgado <laughs> but it has come from Cordoba, Cordoba but not from Lucena <laughs> oh you thought Lucena was a name yeah yeah I wasn't reading properly so this has come from Javier Delgado Javier, Javier. <laughs> from Lucena at first I thought it was a person called Lucena from Cordoba but no it's from Javier Delgado from a village or town called Lucena in the province of Cordoba, Spain. And Javier refers to episode 252 in which we spoke about international business. So englishpodcast.com/252 and in that podcast we spoke about things that you could trademark. For example, you could trademark sounds, particular sounds. We spoke about the MGM lion, for example, at the beginning of MGM movies, Rrr, that lion. And we also spoke about the Harley Davidson engine because apparently Harley Davidson have trademarked the sound of their motorbikes. Reza, could you read Javier's email? I work as a music teacher and I'm a musician too. So, I love all the beautiful sounds. I usually buy a motorbike considering it sound. Well, it's sound, you mean, or because of the way it sounds, he also wrote. I've just listened to you asking for trademark Harley Davidson sound. Here you have an example for my last motorbike i think he means of my last motorbike i've sold it a few years ago what well, you mean i sold sorry to be so pedantic but a few years ago needs a past simple not present perfect i sold it a few years ago you can change the exhaust that's el tubo de escape in order to change the sound this is the screaming eagle exhaust sound <laughs> Besides that, another iconic motorbike sound, the Vespa sound. You can hear a Vespa making percussion for my Duduk's musical accompaniment. So I want to thank you Javier very much for for sending us the email and the example sounds. Now, in the link to the show notes to this episode, englishpodcast.com/2558, I have included the links to Javier's YouTube example sounds but I'm going to play one sound of the two for Reza now and Reza and you listener I'd like you to guess if you think it's a Harley Davidson sound or a Vespa sound are you confident you can do this Reza I'm going to give it a go you know the difference between a Harley Davidson and a Vespa I think I'll know I think so okay so what is this sound is it the sound of a Harley Davidson exhaust or a Vespa motorbike Okay, Razor, you are on the spot. All attention is on you. Was that a Harley Davidson engine or a Vespa? That was definitely, without any doubt, a Harley Davidson engine accompanying an Armenian duduk. It was the Vespa. That was the Vespa. <laughs> yes. No way. It was the Vespa. Seriously. Oh wow. Seriously, this is the Harley Davidson. That was quite difficult, actually. I don't think I would have 
guess that either because the Vespa did sound very meaty. It did sound very full, very full sound. You you fooled me there. You fooled me. I couldn't do it, Javier. The Vespa sounded much better than a Vespa normally sounds, in my opinion, <laughs> in your recording. Anyway, we both think your music is very creative. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. And again, if you want to see the videos, go to inglespodcast.com slash 258. By the way, do you play the duduk? Was that you playing that? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was Javier, yeah. There, there can't be many of you in Spain. From what I know of the duduk, hardly anybody in Armenia plays it. And it comes from Armenia. So how many of you are there in Spain who can play it? You, you might be the only person. I wonder if there's a Duduk Facebook page. Next, we have an email question from Crispin Montejano from Veracruz, Mexico. And Crispin says, the expressions whatever and whenever are used when one of two people are talking and one of them gets bother. I think you mean one of them is bothered or one of them is annoyed, Crispin. And then says, whatever or whenever. Is that correct? What do you think, Reza? Yes, sounds good to me, because these words can be used to show annoyance, irritation or lack of patience. Let's give an example. Craig. Yep. There are no more chocolate biscuits. They've all gone. <sighs> Do you want a plain biscuit or one with jam inside? Oh, whatever. Oh, he's, he's clearly not happy. He wanted a chocolate biscuit. He's saying whatever, like I'll take jam if that's what you got. He's not really happy. Me da igual. Whatever. He's not happy. Reza, I have a question for you. I can only record podcasts next Monday at 6 a.m. in the morning or 11.30 at night. Which time do you prefer? 6 or 11 at night. Oh, whenever you like. <laughs> so again, slight annoyance. Reza's a bit bothered that it has to get up early. Whenever you like. So whenever can mean cuando sea or cuando quiera. For example, what time do you want to meet for lunch tomorrow? Whenever you like. I don't mind. So whenever you like, at whatever time. It can also mean every time that. For example, whenever we get voice messages, it makes me smile. So every time, every single time a voice message arrives, we like it and it makes us smile. Because we know people are listening. So in that use of whenever, it's not annoyance at all. Quite the opposite. We're very happy. So sometimes whenever, whatever, express annoyance, but sometimes they just mean every time that. Sometimes it can just be neutral. So it can mean anything. For example, Reza, what should we do tonight? Whatever you like, whatever you want. I don't really care. I have no plans. So there it's, it's quite neutral. Now, for the main topic of the podcast this week, we're going to speak about some very British problems. Now, this idea and all credit goes to the Twitter account, So Very British, altogether, todo junto, at So Very British on Twitter. And I suggest you follow this Twitter account because they tweet with some very British expressions and language from a cultural perspective. It's a very interesting twitter account to follow and recently they tweeted some three word horror stories so three words that might mean a particular british situation of horror so something very negative i'm going to we're going to say them and maybe reza you could say what you think it might suggest what it might represent especially from a british perspective and the first expression they said was jumped the queue so what do you understand by that and also what does the expression mean well for most british people the thought is utterly horrific <laughs> you were standing in a queue let's say waiting to go to the cinema or even a queue for the bus in the street 
and along comes another person. They just got there and they went in front of you and bought the ticket. They got on the bus or they got into the cinema. That is a horrific thought for most British people. Yeah, you probably know how seriously we take our queuing, and it's not the same in every culture. The Americans might say to stand in line. So standing in line for something is to queue or to queue up, the phrasal verb to queue up. So if somebody jumps the queue, they push in. And that's horrible if you're British because queuing is a national pastime. It's quite funny in a way to observe foreigners jumping queues in the UK. Poor guys, simply because they don't know how important it is to us. So along comes that Spanish tourist or that Bolivian tourist or Italian or whatever. Is this where I get the bus? Arrive? Oh, there's the bus. Get on. Little did they know that 25 Londoners have been waiting 10 minutes for that bus and are now very annoyed <laughs> that that foreigner just got on it. The next expression is you'll be fine. The contraction of you will, you'll, you'll be fine. Imagine you're going to take a test or an English exam and you tell your friend you're really worried, you're, you're really concerned. And then you hear the expression, oh, you'll be fine. Now they could mean it, but they might be saying that because they know you won't be. They know you're going to fail. Oh, you'll be fine. For example, Reza, if I said to you tomorrow I need to give a presentation at a conference and I haven't rehearsed it, I haven't practiced it, I have no idea what I'm going to say. You'll be fine, Craig. Liar. <laughs> I won't be. I won't be. I don't want to say, oh, oh dear, this sounds terrible. So I just say, you'll be fine. Yeah. What's the next one? This one could happen in a barber shop or a hairdresser just a trim. Now, what is this word trim, Craig? Trim is a haircut, but where they don't cut a lot of hair. They just tidy up or clean up your haircut, and really the length of your hair doesn't change much. So just a trim might mean they're going to cut your hair a lot, and they're going to remove too much of your hair. So just a trim could be a horror story if they cut too much hair. Do you know, this is a tr true anecdote. It uh, happened to me a few times. A barber I went to when I was very, very uh, young, like uh, 18 years old, something like that, 19 years old, 20. And I had never heard this expression before. Three word horror story. He <laughs> cut my, I remember the very first time it happened. Then every time after that, I was expecting it. So it didn't shock me so much. But it caused great confusion. He cut my hair. And after cutting the hair to my satisfaction, he said, he coughed <clears throat> and said, anything on, sir? Anything on? Sir. Anything what? on, sir? Like that, you, that I That sounds not, like a three-word horror story. I did not know what he meant. I said, uh, sorry? Ah, I know. Anything on, sir? I know what he meant. He meant, do you want any product or hairspray or hair gel on your hair? No, that's what I thought he meant. I said, no, 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 I no, no, gel. He went, ah, no, sir. Ah, anything on, sir? At which stage he pointed to a poster he had in the corner of his barber shop. That poster was for a very well-known product, which can also be bought at a pharmacist. Ah, Jurex. To uh, prevent uh, un unwanted pregnancies. All right. <laughs> but uh, it took me about five minutes to work it out, and it was embarrassing that he had to repeat it. So the cough, <clears throat> anything on, sir? He was trying <laughs> to sell me one of those products because he sold them in his very old-fashioned barber shops. It was Contraception, so yeah, because in the old days, years ago, they sold contraceptives in barber shops. You couldn't buy them in machines, in vending machines. At that stage, you probably could, but it was just a particularly old-fashioned barber shop. <laughs> We're talking about the late 1980s, and it's just the, you know, the, the subtle cough. <clears throat> Anything on, sir? Any extra services, sir? <laughs> and I made such a, an embarrassment of myself saying, oh, no, no gel for me. No, no, no. Anything on, sir? <laughs> no, 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 really nothing. And then he points at the poster. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's funny. I'm not quite sure why the next three words could be a horror story. Can you think of an interpretation for how are you? Yes. After someone has asked you how you are, 
and you're having a terrible time, maybe someone you know has just died. Maybe you're you're you you're going to die yourself. You've been diagnosed with a terminal disease. You've lost all your money. Your wife's left you. And you have to explain this to, to them. They just said, how are you? And you say, well, I lost all my money. My wife, I'm going to die, blah, blah, blah. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what else can you say now? <laughs> and the, the poor person who asks you is thinking, well, I don't know what to say now. What's okay. funny about that is that the same Twitter account, so very British, also tweeted a very short conversation where you see somebody you know and you say, "How are you?" And the reply is, "I'm fine." And you? And you say, "I'm fine, thank you." And you? And you've forgotten that you've already said you're fine. So the conversation goes backwards and forwards. <laughs> I'm fine. And you? Because it's such an automatic response, you don't remember you've already said how you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember years and years ago, you won't really hear it much now, but it was a very old-fashioned thing. People used to say, how do you do? That's and, still... And the response was, how, how do, you do? do you do? Nobody actually answered it. So yeah. how do you do in theory is, come on, come with thou stead. But you had to answer it with, come with thou stead. Yeah. Like, you didn't actually say how, it was just, how do you do? Oh, how do you do? And it then, still might be used in a very formal situation, maybe a job interview or a business meeting. I could imagine that being used, but it's not very common. How do you do? Not anymore. The next one is possibly a situation where your boss invites you into his or her office and says, uh, excuse me, Reza, a quick word? What do you understand by that? A quick word. I'm in trouble. Yep. I'm in yep. trouble. They don't want to say exactly what the problem is in front of everybody else. So a quick word makes it sound unimportant. Don't worry, it's not going to take very long. But you know it is. But you know it's it's not going to be that quick, and it's going to be it's going to be bad, whatever it is. Can I have a quick word in my office? Sounds very horrific. What's the next one? Out of milk. <gasps> oh my Horror! God, Razor's coming to podcast. I open the fridge. It's five minutes to eleven. He's arriving in. Another two hours. <laughs> yeah, because we plan to meet at 11. So he could be here by one. And Oh, out of milk. Out of milk means I got that all. There's no milk. I have to go to the supermarket to buy milk. I'm out of milk. If you've invited someone around specifically for a tea or coffee, then this is a horrific situation to be in, clearly. Mm. Or if you've invited some for, for someone for dinner and you thought, oh, you, you're giving the perfect dinner party and like, Coffee, tea, oh, everything. Oh, no, no milk. Oh, the ending. You, you've blown it all. It was such a good meal. You were the what perfect does we've blown it? What does we've blown it all mean? You've blown it all. You've ruined it. So it was so good. But because you have no milk now, you've blown it. It's ruined. And they'll only remember the last part. Oh, you no milk for the coffee. <laughs> The next expression, the next three words, the three word horror story might be fun, which could mean it probably won't be. Reza, I've been invited and I'd love you to come to a three hour poetry reading this evening in a bar. Okay. Might be fun. <laughs> might be fun, yeah. <laughs> but might not be. <laughs> might not be. Probably won't be. <laughs> Half an hour poetry reading might, but three hour? I'm not sure about that. What's the next one? The next one is very familiar to anybody who lives in the UK and travels on public transport. Rail replacement bus. That is a bus which you're going to have to take now because the train that you've paid for <laughs> has been cancelled. And now your only option is to get on that bus. And... Uh, British rail services being terrible as they are these days, you will hear this a lot. And everybody knows buses are not as fast as trains and they go through lots of traffic. So as soon as you've heard these words, you know your journey has just increased by a very long time. Rail replacement bus. I feel like in that situation, giving the worker, the person who works in the rail station, some supermarket vouchers 
and saying, this is my money replacement service. <laughs> this is instead of giving you money. The next one is have a dance. Have a dance. Notice the connection there between the sounds with have a becomes have a have a dance now i don't particularly enjoy dancing but uh, if i'm in a social situation and someone says to me come on have a dance it might make me cringe which means react in a negative way I, i i don't feel comfortable i don't know these people and everybody's saying come on have a dance have a dance and you feel bad because Everybody's dancing. You're expected to dance, but you don't feel comfortable. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, I, I see what you mean now. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you lose whatever you do now. Because if you do have a dance, you know you're a terrible dancer, so you're going to look awful. But now if you don't have a dance, everybody thinks, oh, Craig, everybody's dancing except you. You're the party pooper. You're, you're the, the killjoy. Yeah, yeah. So you, whatever happens now, you're going to look back. Yeah, you can't win, especially if you don't feel like dancing, but you're obliged to dance because it's the expectation. I hate that situation. I Have a say, dance. I really dislike people who do it. I really hate that type of person who goes, go on, have a dance. And you said, no, 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 it's all right. Yeah, go on. You, you know you want to. No, I really don't. I don't want to. And they insist. And now everybody's listening. Well, is he going to dance? I hate the person who puts me in that situation. Like, oh, so now I look, now you're going to make me look bad, whatever I do. Yeah, exactly. It's I, terrible. I never do that to people. I'd say to somebody, you want, you want to have a dance? And if they say no, I'd say, well, all right then. Because yeah. because I know I've suffered in that position and I don't like to put anybody else in that position. Exactly. I want to dance because I feel like dancing, not because everybody else wants me to. Here's a three-word horror story, Reza. Back to Brussels. Well, this sounds like reality at, at the minute. <laughs> the United Kingdom being a country which never really knows if it's in the European Union or not, and Brussels being the capital... I suppose, of the European Union, I suppose it's got something to do with that. Do we go back yeah. to that or not? Uh, this decision, is, is it going to be made by the British or by the European Union? It's very current and topical at the moment, the idea of a Brexit. But maybe if you're listening to this podcast in a year or two, you've got no idea what we're speaking about. But back in 2019, we were going back to Brussels and negotiating and trying to decide on Brexit. So the idea of going back again to Brussels is just exhausting. It's just a never-ending political disaster. I've just thought of a related three-word horror story uh, title going around these days at the minute. No deal Brexit yeah. seems to be horror for a lot of people. So if it seems to be if you have a deal, a deal on trato, for some people that's okay. But if not, a no deal Brexit, oh no, that's horrific. I've got a three word horror story to do with Brexit. The Irish backstop. Yes, another one. Of course, that's causing a lot of problems, isn't it? Okay, here's another one for you. How would you connect this to a horror story, Reza? Contact customer support. Immediately I'm horrified as soon as I read those words. <laughs> Frustrated. Yep. Those words always, they horrify me. But more than that, they immediately deflate my spirits. Yes, yes. As soon as I see or hear those words, I know I'm about to waste a very <laughs> important part of my life. Yeah. You can feel the life drain out of you or drain is a drain is this ugly, but the, the life leaves you when you're working on something on the computer and then a sign comes up, a message, contact customer support that, oh, this is going to be hours. Yeah. And you know that the first five, 10 or 15 minutes will give you no support whatsoever. Have you ever rung customer support of a well-known Irish low-cost airline? Oh dear, if you've ever had to do that, I can't say their name, of course, can I? But they're, they happen to be the biggest airline in Europe. You call them and you get, first of all, 10 minutes of, thank you for ringing customer support, blah, blah. If you're phoning up about booking a holiday in uh, Malaga, uh, no. If you're phoning up about <laughs> being one of our new fly customer point saver, uh, no. If you, this goes on for about 10 minutes. If you're wearing a red shirt, press you, six. Uh, and by the way, you pay for that. A yeah. very, very expensive rate. Not them. You pay for them to advertise themselves 
for 10 minutes, whether you like it or not, before a person finally comes along. <laughs> I've, I've paid about five euros already and I haven't even spoken to anyone. Such a horrific experience. I think for you, this, is, this might be the worst horror story. Contact customer support. The next one is view current balance. Where would you see that? Current balance. View sounds, current balance. Well, balance uh, sounds like a bank a bank story. So maybe you've maybe you've asked for some money. Maybe you've tried to withdraw money from the bank, and it says no, money and uh, cash unavailable. View current balance, and you have a look at your balance and see that you don't have any money to take out. Exactly. For me, my bank account is usually in the red. If it's in the red, it's negative. So there's there's less than zero <laughs> euros in it. So if I see view current balance, oh no, it's going to be bad news. In the red are three more horrific words. Generally speaking, in they're the always red. bad. Yeah, in the red is very negative. The next one is meet and greet. Meet and greet. That suggests socializing, small talk, being uncomfortable and maybe speaking to people I'm not particularly interested in speaking to. Where might you have to do a meet and greet? At a conference, perhaps, when you first arrive, or if a company has invited another company to visit their their premises, their offices, maybe two companies are coming together, so you're meeting them. Greeting means say hello, saludar. So you're, you're greeting the people, you're saying who you are and saying hello to them. Craig, you look well. Yeah, thank you. But is that always the truth when you say to people, oh, you look well? Do you often mean it? I'm not sure if it's a I, social expression that's used automatically or to make the other person feel good, even though it's not true. So when people say it to me, I always think, well, do they really mean it? Do I really look good or look well? Or are they trying to make me feel good? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you don't know how honest they're being. Mm. Or it could be someone fishing for compliments. Fishing? Mm. Pescar. Fishing pescar. for compliments. Yeah. Looking for compliments. Yeah. So quite often if a person A says, oh, you look well, to person B, it's because they want person B to say, oh, you too? It's, oh, have you done your hair or something like that? So very often the person who wants to be complimented, the person who wants somebody to say something positive about them starts by saying, oh, you look well, just yeah. so the other person says, oh, and you too, you look fabulous. Don't, don't you think that happens as well? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. By the way, that's a very nice shirt. Is that new? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not, I am telling the truth there. I do mean oh, that. It's okay. a nice shirt. It is fairly new, yeah. yeah. I think I've had it for a couple of months. I like it. Oh, thanks very much. Our final expression, honestly, you choose another three-word horror story. Why would that possibly be negative? Honestly, you choose. Oh, it, de it depends on the situation. Particularly if you're choosing the best of a bad bunch. <laughs> yeah. The best of a bad bunch. A bunch is a collection of something, like a bunch of flowers. You get maybe six, seven or eight flowers. Uh, imagine they're all bad. There's no good flower. So if I say, oh, you honestly, you choose... Well, I, I know your choice is going to be bad because all of the bunch were bad. So quite often people say, honestly, you choose as a, a way of getting out of making a bad decision. Exactly. Putting the responsibility on the other person. Imagine you go to the cinema and you don't want to choose the film in case it's not a good film. So you want to put the responsibility on your partner. Say, no, honestly, you choose. I don't, I don't give a damn. And we British, we do like to to moan, to grumble. That's an informal way of saying complain about things. Particularly when, you know, someone has, has made the effort of taking a risk. So when someone makes the effort of choosing the film, we go and watch it. And then afterwards, we say to our partner, husband, wife, we go, well, that wasn't a very good film. I, I think I could have chosen better. But, <laughs> but, but you didn't choose. But you didn't choose. You made someone else choose by saying, honestly, you choose so that you can grumble about it afterwards. So these expressions were taken from at So Very British on Twitter. If you can think of a three-word horror story in English, can you think of three words that make you a bit uncomfortable or nervous or even horrified? 
If you can, we'd love to hear them. Please send us your voice messages with your three word horror story and we'll try to guess the situation you're describing voice messages as usual on speakpipe.com that's s-p-e-a-k-p-i-p-e slash english podcast or you could send an email uh, you can get craig at craig at english podcast.com or reza at belfast reza at gmail.com and of course you're very welcome to visit the mansion inglaise download store for online courses at store.mansioninglaise.net as ever thank you to all our patrons the people who give us a small donation every month and we'd especially like to thank our gold sponsor that's bruno bruno the man who gives the walking tours of copenhagen in english and spanish If you want to find out about those tours, have a look at his webpage. It's copenhagenwalkingtour.com. Or if you fancy South America, why not try a walking tour in the favela of Rio in Brazil? It's safe because he uses local guides and they help the local community. To find out about that one, have a look at favelawalkingtour.com.br. And if you'd like to join our wonderful co-producers on Patreon and help support the podcast for as little as $1 a month, you can get instant access to recent transcriptions that have been transcribed by Angelica. Go to patreon.com slash podcast for details of signing up. And we'd also like to welcome our latest Patreon supporters who are Jose Ezequiel Olano, And Michael, or Mikel, not sure how to pronounce that. Thank you both for joining. And of course, thank you to all our wonderful Patreons. We don't have time to mention all of your names, but they are on the website at inglespodcast.com slash 258. What's next week, Reza? Next week's episode is all about traffic. Look forward to that. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Have a wonderful week. Until next week, it's goodbye from me. Toodaloo from me. Toodaloo. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs> <laughs>